to enjoy a few extra shekels from the paycheck. Surprise! Here comes inflation across the board again, and this time it seemed to catch even the experts off guard. Joining us now in Midpoint, Peter Morrissey is an economist and professor of business at the University of Maryland, and as well as a national columnist. And Robert Wiedemeyer is a noted author of several books, including America's Bubble Economy. Gentlemen, welcome to you both. Thank you for taking the time to join us. Oh, Thank nice you. To be with you. All right, Peter, I'm going to go ahead and throw this to you first. Let's talk about inflation here. Because as we look at it, the, the, the title is it gives the Fed another topic for worry. There are some people thinking that this couldn't have caught them off guard. They must have seen this coming, or maybe it was the level of inflation that caught people off guard. Well, it's the problem that the sort of the Yellen, Brunecki, uh, Summers people live in the silo of Harvard, Yale, Stanford, Berkeley. They don't listen to any economists in state universities, for example. I have been writing for some time now. In fact, I had a column. I think it was May 16th or May 18th on Fox that indicated that the Fed had better start putting its foot on the brake. This notion that somehow or other pumping a lot of money into the economy and inflating it creates growth is silly. Uh, we've had cheap money for a very long time and the economy isn't growing any better than it did during the George Bush years uh, simply because the Obama administration has, isn't fixed to what's broken. And those, the things that are broken are far beyond the reach of the Federal Reserve. Unfortunately, Janet Yellen is to economics, her and her husband, what the Pelosi's are uh, to politics. And she's fixated on the long-term unemployed. I am very concerned about them. But printing a lot of money so Jamie Dimon can run his casino in New York on the cheap uh, doesn't do very much for the unemployed uh, steel worker in Akron, Ohio. Peter, one of these days we're going to get you to tell us exactly how you feel. Brilliant, of course, as always. Uh, Robert, let's go ahead and throw it to you right now. Your, your take. Yeah, well, this is obviously the, uh, uh, the big problem for the Fed is uh, so far printing money has only produced positive results. I, I agree with Peter, of course, not as good as people like, but for the stock market it's been great. Uh, but if all this printed money is so great, um, you know, why does the Fed always taper? You know, if there's no threat of inflation that everybody seems to believe, why do they want to taper? I, I think they, they know more than they're saying. Uh, they're inflation deniers and maybe even inflation liars. Uh, and, and again, if putting money so good never caused inflation, well, uh, why don't we just, uh, you know, get rid of taxes and uh, issue a lot of bonds and have the Fed buy all those bonds with, uh, with paper money. All right, are Fed we going to go here again, though, gentlemen, where every time we hear something like this, we hear that the Fed may go ahead and raise interest rates, and then we hear about another recession or another depression that may take part here. So, I mean, let's go ahead and start from that perspective then, and I'll go ahead and start with you, Robert, on this. What does Janet Yellen do next? She's going to continue to try to make believe that we're, we're not addicted to printed money. So she's going to taper, and she'll taper today. She'll taper probably again at the next meeting. Uh, but I can guarantee you, if things go bad on the stock market, and I think she's much more aware of the stock market than we all believe and very focused on it, she will reverse that tapering. She will hopefully print more money to try to boost that stock market back up. More print coming, Peter? Oh, I think so. I think the uh, other panelist has it exactly right. They'll taper, but remember, they're not withdrawing uh, from all the bonds they purchased. They're rolling them over, and they're still purchasing more bonds, just fewer of them. And they'll keep short-term rates depressed until 2015, likely the middle of the year. It's the wrong policy. It's the wrong choice. Another thing is that now we have a member of the Democratic Party uh, uh, running the Fed. And uh, while she's not willing to go as far as the White House economic advisors and say a higher minimum wage uh, would not cause unemployment, uh, she's willing to, to avoid dealing with interest rates until after the election. I mean, the president is already in tough shape. The Democrats are in very tough shape for the fall elections. Think about what it would mean if all of the folks who write the checks in New York to finance Chuck Schumer's Democratic machine had to deal with a bear market. And if she raised interest rates after this meeting like she should, I mean, it would be bad for stock prices. That doesn't mean it would be bad for the country. Stock prices should be a symptom of a good running economy, not something created by artificial money printing, which is what's been going on. All right. Now, Robert, I'm going to go to you on this one because here comes a line that I read today, and I'm going to quote this now. And we're talking about all this now with inflation, uh, another spike here. It's why the Fed might actually welcome the news of slightly higher inflation. It will help ease longstanding concerns that inflation might be too low. What's your take on that? 
Well, again, I think that's the idea of playing the game. Is Janet will taper? It's just the game. They'd actually like to see a little bit of inflation in their statistics. Again, as we all know, inflation is probably much higher than in the statistics. But you know, back to that, they probably like to see a little bit of inflation in the statistics. Uh, I'm, I'm sure a little, but only a little. It starts getting too high, and you're going to scare people. You're going to scare people that printed money really does cause inflation. Is this as surprising as, as we've heard about it? Because some people are using that word here today, that it's a shock. It's inflation suddenly hitting. Is that fair to say? Is that a, is that a fair characterization? Either one. Oh, I don't think it's yeah, fair think at all. I said that we really would get don't more think inflation. Printing money cause inflation. I, I mean, they're denying it. They do it away. As I said, their actions speak louder than words. But, I mean, if... They, they really are, are kind of assuming, just like, well, hey, we can borrow as much money as the government wants to. There's no problem. We can print as much money as the government wants to. No problem. I think they know it's not true, but if you actually see it in print, like in inflation numbers, it's going to be scary and a shock to them. Absolutely. Peter, go ahead. Uh, there isn't a direct connection between money and inflation. More money can cause inflation, but it depends on other conditions and other markets, which are starting to emerge. Labor markets are tightening. Uh, Fed surveys themselves have a lot of employers complaining of shortages of skilled labor. So at a time like this, more money will cause inflation. A little bit of inflation. Uh, the numbers we got yesterday had prices rising at more than a 4% annual rate. That is not a little bit. That's a tax on the elderly, and it's also a tax on all those working people that Janet Yellen says she worries so much about because they're not getting 4% raises. The Fed has been lulled into thinking and the popular press that somehow or other inflation will cause growth. If you're growing too fast, you may get some inflation, but it doesn't mean that if you just go out and manufacture the stuff, you're going to get growth. It's like the guy who said, you know, I noticed that rich entrepreneurs all wear a Rolex watch. Let me go down to Tiffany's and get a Rolex watch, and then I'll drive to the bank and ask him how much more money there is in my bank account. That's the kind of reasoning the Fed has been using in chasing inflation as some sort of elixir for growth. The reality is Obama's policies are killing growth in the United States. And until we get another president of the United States, you could make Donald Duck chairman of the Fed, and that chairman won't be able to do anything with monetary policy to create growth. So it might as well sit on the money machine and avoid the inflation in the process. I would love to see Donald Duck there simply because I would like to see him hold a press conference one day. That would be probably the most important thing in Washington, D.C. for a long time. I'm with you on that one. All right. Well, it would uh, be less error prone than Janet <laughs> and more interesting than Ben. Well, it would be more entertaining. Let's put it that way, certainly. That's right. It would be fun. We get Warner, sadly, Warner Brothers uh, uh, animation division closed some years ago. So, unfortunately, we have to move them on. Leave it at that. Oh, there we go. We got Peter back for a second. Okay, uh, we got about uh, two, two and a half minutes left here. I want to move on to oil prices. Crude is now $107. Iraq's biggest oil refinery is attacked. I'll go ahead and start this with you, Robert. Uh, I guess you're just going to have to throw this to the American consumer now who's going to have to, one way or another, understand that what's happening in, in Iraq is going to wind up in your gas tank very quickly. I think it is, uh, and that's obviously a concern not just for consumers, but the whole economy. I mean, the real issue will be, though, if they can start to blow up the oil-producing areas in the southern part of Iraq. The refinery mostly feeds domestic gasoline needs for Iraq. So that, that's when, if they get to the southern field... The ability of airstrikes. What is going to be the investor and the speculative concern on that as far as the airstrikes and what that may damage? I imagine that they're already looking ahead to that and how that may also affect the price of oil. Well, it depends on where the airstrikes are targeted and what is necessary. Uh, I wouldn't assume that if the uh, rebels get a hold of the oil, that initially there'll be a spike. Don't get me wrong. There'll be a big spike. However, longer term, that oil is going to get sold because they need to sell it to finance their operations. You have to remember, this is like the mob over there. The ISIS is nothing but a bunch of gangsters. They, they, they have been financing themselves by holding up banks and extorting private individuals. It, it's a bad scene from, like, you know, New Jersey mobster. They're going to have to sell that oil. The question is, who has morals low enough to buy the oil? Who is so internally corrupt and inclined to rattle the chain of the West? Well, look for the Chinese to buy the oil at a discount. Look for some German fingerprints, perhaps, in the process. They like to make money off of these kinds of things. But the money's going to get, the oil's going to get sold. And six months from now, I don't think oil markets are going to be that much affected as long as the United States Air Force doesn't destroy them. Careful now, Peter, because Tony Soprano would have done a much better job of running things here. Uh, we only have about 30 seconds left, so a quick comment from both of you. First, from Robert, uh, the effect on the stock market for all of this, uh, as far as the inflation rates are concerned. 
Well, the stock market doesn't seem to be affected by much of reality right now, so I wouldn't expect much of an impact. They don't seem to worry too much about earnings, economy, or anything. It, it seems to like to go up. But, of course, that psychology, it can change, and it will change. But short term, I don't expect a particularly big impact. All right, Peter? Some inflation won't be bad for the stock market as long as it believes that Janet Yellen is not changing course. The big thing for the stock market will be interest rates going up, going up appreciably. That would affect the market. Iraq, that's a different story. If oil prices spike, the market will be disturbed. Whether that disturbance holds or, or, or not will depend on how the U.S. economy responds. I think it will respond favorably in that it will absorb the shock and continue as it is. Not great, but not bad. Peter Morrissey, Robert Wiedemeyer, thank you so much for taking the time, explaining things to us, and making sure that we bring Donald Duck into the conversation, which was absolutely <laughs> perfect. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Take I think care. it is fair to say, ladies and gentlemen, that there might be some people who would say that certainly when it comes to the Fed, uh, it wouldn't be Donald Duck, it might be Mickey Mouse instead that might be more apropos. Uh, tell us what you think about your, uh, your confidence, if you will, in the Federal Reserve and where we're going right now. And inflation, it's here to stay again. Stay with us. We're here to stay because on Midpoint, we question everything. This is